in this lesson we are going to solve this question i have on the screen the question is that combine the two forces p and t which act on the phased structure at b into a single equivalent force so what you have to do is that you are supposed to find the the resultant of these two forces which is force p and force t okay but when you look at for when you look at force t it makes an angle with the y and then the x axis okay but for for force p it lies on the x axis directly so for us to be able to find the resultant we will need the component of force t okay so first of all let's find the component of force t before you can find the component of force t you must know the angle that force t makes with either the x axis or the y axis so let's look at that so i'm going to draw a free body diagram for this force system here okay so i have this to be force p okay which is 800 pounds and then this is force t which is 600 pounds okay and this is point b now let's look at something here when you look at this angle alpha here okay see that it will we will have the same angle alpha here because they are alternating right so in that case we are going to have this angle here to be alpha which is the angle that the force t makes with the x axis okay so let's take note of that so all you have to do now is that you need alpha if you're able to find alpha then you can find the component of force t okay so let's look at how you are going to calculate for alpha to calculate for alpha i'm going to consider this triangle here let's take a look at that the triangle that i'm drawing with the blue color okay so let's look at this triangle here okay so this triangle here i'll name this side here as h okay that's the height as h and then i will name this unknown side here as s okay now you know this side to be three feet okay you know this side to be three feet and then this side here to be six feet let's take note of that so i'm going to draw the triangle in the blue color here so i have that triangle here okay you know one part of this side to be three feet and then you know the remaining side to be s okay and then we know the height to be h and then this angle to be alpha so now you want to find s and h okay if you're able to find s and h then you can find alpha so let's look at how i'm going to find s and h to find s and h okay i'm going to consider another triangle okay so let's look at that triangle then that triangle will be this small triangle here okay it will be this triangle here so from this triangle here, you can see that you have this side to be the s and then you have the height to be the h okay so let's draw that triangle also so we have that triangle here okay so we have this side to be the s and then you have this side to be the the h okay and then this is the 60 degrees angle that we have here so you want to find s and h and then let's not forget this side is six feet so you want to find s and h okay so let's look at how i'm going to do that h is opposite to the angle okay so i can take sine of the 60 degrees that will be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse right so that would be h over six feet so i'm going to have h to be equal to six sine of 60 degrees okay and then you have for s you can take cosine of the 60 degrees which will be the adjacent side which is s over hypotenuse which is six feet so s is going to be six cosine of 60 degrees okay all right so let's simplify these values and see so i'm going to have s to be equal to six cosine of 
60 degrees will give me three feet. Okay, and then H will be six sine of 60 degrees. That gives me three root three feet. Okay, so we have this value here. Okay, so now we can use this this to find the the angle alpha. Okay, so let's go back to the triangle in blue again. So for the triangle in blue, I'm going to have this side here to be three feet plus s, right? And we know s to be three feet, so that would be what six feet, right? So let's clean all this side here. Okay, and then make it one. So all this side becomes six feet. Right, and then we know h to be 3 root 3 feet. Okay, so now let's use this figures here to find the angle alpha. Okay, so to find angle alpha, we can take the turn of the alpha, right? Because you know the opposite side and then we know the other same side. So tan alpha, we got the opposite side, which is uh, 3 root 3 divided by the other same side, which is 6, right? So alpha will be equal to the tan inverse of this. Okay, so tan inverse of 3 root 3 on 6. So let's first simplify 3 root 3 on 6. That can give us root 3 on 2. Okay, that is much root 3 on 2. Because this 3 will go into itself and then go into 6 2 times. That gives us a value of 0 0.366. Right, so let's take tan inverse of that value here. So tan inverse of 0 0.866 will give us 40.89 degrees. So let's mean that 40.9 degrees. So that's the angle alpha. Okay, so now that you know the angle alpha, okay, we know alpha to be equal to 40.9 degrees. You can now find the x and y component of the first t. Okay, so let's look at that. So I'm going to have this to be the x component and then this to be the y component. So I'll name this ty and then this to be tx. So now let's find ty and then tx. You see that tx is adjacent to the angle alpha, so you can take cosine of the angle. Okay, so cosine of alpha, which is 40.9 degrees. To be equal to the adjacent side, which is Tx over hypotenuse, which is 600 pounds. Okay. All right, let me leave that. Okay, symbol 600 pounds. So let's have Tx to be equal to 600. Okay, 600 cosine of 40.9 degrees. Okay, so that's going to be. Let's simplify that. So 600 cosine of 40.9. That gives us a value of 453.5 pounds. Okay, that's for the S component of the first T. So let's find the Y component also. So the Y component is opposite. So I can take sine of the angle alpha. So sine of 40.9 degrees will be equal to the opposite side which is ty over hypotenuse which is what 600. So we're going to have ty to be equal to 600 sine of 40.9 okay that's 40.9 degrees so let's simplify this so 600 sine of 40.9 degrees that gives us a value of 392.8 pounds. So now you know the x and y component of the force T. Okay, so you can go ahead and then find the component of the resultant force. So for the component of the resultant force, you have to sum up all the forces in the x direction. 
okay i almost forgot this let's take a look at this so when you look at um first t okay the x component is moving in the negative x direction okay so you have to negate the value that you got so that'll be minus four five three point five pounds and then the y component is also moving in the negative y direction so you will have to negate this value here okay so now let's continue so now you are summing up all the forces in the x direction and all the forces in the y direction but look at force p it has a component lying on the x axis and then it is in the direction of the positive x axis so that's going to be 800 pounds plus the s component of what force t and then that's what minus four five three point five pounds okay so let's find this so 800 minus four five three point five that gives me a value of three hundred and Okay, so that gives me 346.5 pounds. Okay, so that's the value that I got. Okay, so now let's do the same for the forces in the y axis direction. Okay, so for the forces in the y axis direction, you start you have only one force, which is the ty, right? So for the forces in the y axis direction, okay, you are going to have minus 392.8 okay minus 392.8 pound because that's the only force in the y as its direction so now we know the component of the resultant force okay we know the s component and then we know the y component so all you have to do here is to find the magnitude of the resultant force okay so let's look at that I'm going to find the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, so let's continue. So for the resultant force, okay, I'm going to find its magnitude. So that will be the square root of the square root of the components, right? So that will be 346.5 squared, okay, plus minus 392.8 squared. Okay, so let's simplify these two values. So I'm going to sum everything up at once. So 346.5 squared plus minus 392.8 squared okay that gives me this value here 274354.09 okay so let's take the square root of that that give me 523.8 pounds okay so that's the value that i got for the resultant force Okay, so now let's find the angle that the resultant force will make with the axis. Okay, so let's find the angle that will make with the axis. In this case, I'm going to find the angle that it makes with the x axis. Okay, so let's say this is my x and y coordinate here. Okay, I have this axis here. This is the x axis and then this is the y axis. Let's look at the component of the resultant force. The x component is positive. Okay, and then the y component is negative. So that tells you that it will lie in the fourth quadrant here. So I'm going to have this to be the resultant force. Okay. So what we want to do now is that we want to find this angle here, which, in, which I'll name theta, which is the angle that the resultant force makes with the positive x axis. Okay. So I'm going to have this component here. This is the x component and then this is the y component. So we want to find this angle theta there. So how do you find theta? So this will be this is be rx and then this will be ry right so the rx was the sum of forces in the x direction and then ry was the sum of the forces in the y direction okay so let's find that angle so since we know the opposite and then the adjacent side we can take tan theta to equal to the opposite side which is ry 
over the hypotenuse, right? Which is sorry, R Y over the adjacent side, which is was R X, right? So that would be minus three nine two point eight over the adjacent side, which is three four six point five. Okay, so let's simplify that. So minus three nine two point three nine two point eight. Okay, divide by three four six point five. That gives me minus one point one three four. Okay, so let's take tan inverse of that value. So tan inverse of this value. Okay, so let's what you're going to get. So tan inverse of minus one point one three four. That gives me an angle of minus minus forty eight point six degrees. Okay, so minus forty eight point six degrees. So that'll be the angle that the resultant force makes with the positive x axis. Okay, this minus is just to tell us that we are measuring in the clockwise direction, okay, which is this direction here. Okay, so you are starting from the uh, from the x axis to where the resultant force is. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe.